ratcheting up a threat aimed at Mexico. There's a very good likelihood that I'll be closing the border next week, and that'll be just fine with me. President Trump has issued that kind of warning before, but now ramping up the pressure from a gilded setting at Mar-a-Lago. I'm very upset with Mexico. To what was billed as an infrastructure repairs tour at Florida's Lake Okeechobee, where the president said he will penalize Mexico economically for failing to curb the flow of migrants. Close it, and we'll, we'll keep it closed for a long time. I'm not playing games. And on the campaign trail. Another two caravans now are pouring up. Mexico could stop them, so easy. Where the president lashed out over asylum claims. I am very afraid for my life. Mocking some afraid. migrants at the southern border. Okay. It's a big, fat con job, folks. It's a big, fat con job. The Trump administration making dire new claims about an immigration crisis. Friday, Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen released a statement saying the system is in free fall. She also wrote to Congress asking for authority to deport unaccompanied migrant children from Central America more quickly, citing in her statement the danger posed to children by the journey to U.S. borders and the realities of a system reaching peak capacity. Friday, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi shot down Nielsen's request, writing, Democrats reject any effort to let the administration deport little children and we reject all anti-immigrant and anti-family attacks from this president. When the president was talking to reporters, he mischaracterized the death of a seven-year-old girl from Guatemala, the circumstances around that. The president saying it was dehydration and that her father had accepted responsibility for not giving her water. She died in December, but Friday medical records were released and show she had a bacterial infection that led to the shutdown of her organs and that she was checked upon apprehension by U.S. officials and they found nothing medically wrong. Part of the complicated human drama that it's unfolding. Kristen, Peter? Indeed. Kelly, thank you. NBC News analyst Jake Sherman is a senior writer at Politico. Jake, good morning. Good morning. Jake, let's start with the Robert Mueller report. I was in Grand Rapids, Michigan, the first rally since it wrapped up. The president said clearly the Russia hoax is dead. He said release the report. But last night he appeared to change his tune a little bit, perhaps aware that there could be some details in there that are still damaging. So is this potentially politically damaging to him still? Absolutely, Peter. I mean, when this report comes out, no matter what's in it, whether it, it implicates criminal behavior or not, it will have 400 pages of details about the inner workings of his campaign, the inner workings of his White House, rehashing how he fired the FBI director, all things of that nature. So absolutely. But the president at the moment is living in a, a good political moment in which newspapers are carrying headlines that he did not collude with Russia. And that's what Mueller found. So that tune will change in about yeah. a week or so. Well, that's right. Democrats, though, are digging in. They say it's not good enough. They set the deadline for this coming week. That's when they want to see the Mueller report and they want to see it unredacted, Jake. So how far are Democrats actually willing to go here? They don't have many options. They could subpoena the report, which is an unlikely uh, scenario. I mean, the redactions are made for national security interests, for grand jury information. And Democrats do run the risk at some point of looking a little bit overzealous and asking too much. If they get a 400 page report, there are going to be redactions. That's something they cannot control. Let me ask you about the border, if I can, very quickly. Yeah. The president repeated a threat. He has done this before, saying he's going to shut down the entire southern border. But what was different this time is he gave a timeline next week. The implications of this are potentially huge, not the least of which the impact on the economy. How serious is this threat? That's right, Peter. I mean, it's serious. He has threatened this many times. Would impact uh, American consumer goods, which many a lot come from Mexico, number one. Number two, you have to ask what his end game is. What is the president trying to achieve? Does he think this is going to bring about a change in behavior by Mexico? Does he think it's going to bring comprehensive immigration reform? It's not clear, but it's a drastic move that will have impacts on people's uh, wallets and checkbooks. It's going to make goods more expensive, and that's something the president's going to have to contend with. And Jake, finally, very quickly, President mm -hmm. Trump seemed to step on his own victory lap by reviving the issue of health care. He says he yeah. wants Republicans to be the party of health care, but giving no timeline for when they might actually have a plan. Is this a strategy that could backfire? Is the president's gearing up for this very tough reelection battle? 
I'm not sure what the strategy is here. It's unclear to me. Republicans have been unable to reform health care over the last couple of years. Many think it cost them control of the House of Representatives. I, I, all week I was speaking to Republicans on Capitol Hill who were practically begging the president not mm. to go down this road. Politically perilous, and it's unclear what the president, again, is trying to achieve with this one. No lack of political news this week, that's for sure. Jake Sherman, Jake, good to see you. Thanks so much. Good to see you too. Thanks.